What's up YouTubes? James here from Sailing Zingaro and there are over 200 boats in this anchorage behind me. I wonder how many of them know the three little hacks that I'm going to teach you guys right now. I hope a lot of them because these are three really cool boat hacks that are cheap, they'll make your boat safer, and they'll save you some money. We're going to start with my personal favorite, Dynema. So if you've never seen a soft shackle, this is what I'm talking about. This is one piece of rope that's been braided and spliced so as to take the head knot and put it through a slip knot, like so. That makes a very, very strong synthetic shackle. If you're interested in making these yourself, I put together a video about a year ago on Dyneema and I explain exactly step by step how to go through that. I'm gonna link that right here. So if you haven't seen that, it would be who of you to learn that skill. It's not hard, it takes about 10 minutes. Just go ahead and click up here, watch this video and come back. I'll be waiting for you right here. Okay, cool, how was that? Now that you know how to make a soft shackle and how to work with Dyneema, let's talk about the pros and cons and compare the two. Now obviously there's the one big difference where these are chafe proof and these obviously aren't. So there are instances where you're gonna wanna use a hard shackle if there's any hard edges such as on your anchors. So I'm sitting here inside my secondary anchor logger to show you guys an application where you would want to use a regular steel shackle and that is on the anchor. If you can see on the end of this anchor, it's got a hole milled into it, and the sides of this hole are very sharp. So if you were to try to use a soft shackle to connect the chain, while this anchor is underwater and moving around, you're more than likely gonna chafe through that. We use a hard shackle instead. Voila. Now you get the protection from the chafing with the hard steel shackle. This is also a rare instance where you can actually use both types of shackles in the same application just for redundancy. For the application of chain to rope, if you're using a thimble and splicing the rope like so, you can use both soft and hard shackles just for a backup. And that's how I do it, that's, that works really well for me. There's also a few pros and cons that aren't so readily apparent. For instance, the soft shackle doesn't make any noise when it's banged around on the deck, which makes a big difference if you use any block deck connections, such as spinnaker sheets, jib sheets, something that's constantly moving in the, on the boat or in the wind. Using a soft shackle will, will greatly reduce the noise. Also, these are much stronger for the same diameter. This will hold up my entire boat. This, not so much. When these hard shackles fail, usually what happens is something will pull at an angle that's not straight on to this and it will end up bending and opening up. That doesn't happen with the soft shackle. When these things fail, the knot usually inverts and if something's pulling strong enough, it'll pull the knot out and it'll slip off that way. But you don't have to worry about this thing turning and, and getting cockeyed like you do with a regular shackle. Another good thing about these soft shackles is you can make them as long or as short as you want to. Use the formula I gave you in the video and make them as long as you want to fit around different things or to fit into custom applications. And that is very nice. With these, you need to buy hundreds of them to have all of the different sizes and strengths that you need. With these, all you need to do is have one roll of Dyneema and make them accordingly. Another con with these is when they do fail, they tend to explode and send shrapnel everywhere. With these, when they fail, they don't explode, they just part, uh, just like a regular line. So the danger area is only if you're touching it. Overall guys, I find that the more people I talk to that have been cruising longer tend to use these soft shackles. So save yourself the trouble, save yourself the headache, and start learning them now, and you're going to be ahead of the curve. They're just better. 
They're easier to use. They're easier for more applications. They're a little bit stronger than the steel ones. They don't explode as easy as the steel ones. And you can see when they are weakening and when they are chafing and you can just replace it. All right, that's enough about Dyneema. Everybody knows I'm crazy about Dyneema. These things are great, use them. Boat hack one over. This brings us to boat hack number two, butyl tape. So this is a roll of 50 feet of butyl tape. What butyl tape is, is a bedding compound that comes in, in tape form, but you can actually just rip off pieces of it, take it off the back of the tape. Easier said than done. Okay, come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Come on, little butyl tape. There we go. So just peel it off the paper backing, and then you can use it as kind of a bubble gum material, just squish it together. It's moldable, it's very UV resistant, and it's great, great, great as a bedding compound. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I'm gonna rebed this with butyl tape. This is just an eye bolt that I set up next to my anchor windlass so I can tie a rope onto this and hold my chain while I'm getting my bridle set up. I bedded this with 5200. That was before I knew about butyl tape. It's very important when you use butyl tape that you countersink all the holes. This is a three bladed countersink bit. I'm gonna put that in there and I'm gonna countersink these holes before I put the butyl tape on. What that does is it flares the outside of the hole where it meets the deck and it's not a 90 degree angle. So some of that butyl tape can stay in there and get smushed in there and it doesn't, doesn't pinch so hard that it comes all the way out. And if done right, this stuff lasts for 40 years plus. So once you do this and you countersink it, it should last forever and you should never have to rebed it. And now this, which I pulled off, which was excess, is now reusable on something else. This is boat hack number three, air conditioning duct insulation. It comes in a sheet, it's very cheap, and you can do the weather stripping on your entire boat at least twice with this whole sheet. In comparison to this weather stripping that you buy at the marine store for $3 a foot, this stuff is one one hundredth of the price. Great stuff. Look how thin this stuff is now. I mean, it's crazy thin. Look at that. Nothing left. It's not gonna. So what we did was we bought this, and this is the same stuff. It's just not cut, and it's actually a little bit. It's a little bit heavier. Eh, it's about the same. It's closed cell foam. But this stuff's like ten dollars for a little little roll of it. This stuff was like ten bucks for a huge sheet. I mean, I could do the whole boat twice with this. So we're just gonna put a straight edge on it, lay it flat, use a razor, and cut it into big sections and then cement it on. Perfect. It's gonna look beautiful when it's done. So now I just kinda of line it up. Wow, that's way thicker than the stuff that we had before. Yeah, way thicker. But that's what I need. Yeah, totally. Okay. Bonus boat hack number four is actually sponsored content. This is called the Barracuda Pro by Army Tech. These guys sent me this flashlight and overall I'm very pleased with it. It's one of the brighter searchlights I've ever seen and it makes a great dinghy flashlight. This thing is way too bright for the boat but if you screw this up underneath the seat of your dinghy, you can always have a flashlight in your dinghy. Left hand's driving, right hand is over your head with a really powerful searchlight. They say 800 meters. I don't know how to measure that, but it goes a long way. The only problem with this thing is it chews through batteries really fast. If you have it on high, it'll eat both lithium ion batteries in about 10 minutes. So it's good for one trip with the dinghy and then you gotta charge it again. But as far as searchlights, you don't have a lot of options. There's those big, huge million candle power plug-in kind or the ones with the huge batteries or this guy here, which is sleek, and you can use it as a dive light too. Overall, I'm very impressed. We use it in the dinghy all the time. Barracuda Pro. 
Army Tech. Check it out. Thanks for watching my video, guys. These three things are all things that I learned along the way, and I wish I would have known them when I left. So that's why I'm teaching them to you. They're all things that make your boat more seaworthy, and they're all cheap and easy ways to make your life more comfortable. If you guys have any of the same things, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to learn more. I'm always willing to learn and keep an open mind. Thanks for watching. Much love. Till next time.